your first and last name title and what you do here. Yes, uh, Jerry Brooks, Chief Medical Officer, Emergency Services for the Bard Health System. Um, first off, I mean, it's been a tough uh, night for you guys, um, your staff, medical staff here. Um, just kind of tell us, walk us through, um, uh, I guess, protocol as uh, people were brought in. Um, well, what happens is um, all of our facilities, uh, we're lucky to have uh, two trauma centers, a level one and a level two in our health system. And um, we're lucky that they were prepared. They had already been, um, they had practice code, code green drills and the last practice was actually an active shooter drill. Um, and um, we tried to learn from all of the previous experiences, unfortunately the mass casualties the Las Vegas uh, incident as, as, as well. Um, so basically a code ring was called. Um, the um, staff was alerted. Um, any uh, needed surgeons, thoracic surgeons, general surgeons, um, anesthesia personnel, any of the hospital staff that was needed was called in. Um, we coordinated it with the uh, EMS system and with the police. Um, we geared up for how many other patients that would arrive, um, and that's how we approached it. And then you said that you guys had an active shooting uh, exercise prior to yes. elaborate on what that exercise is and why it prepared you guys for the event. Um, what happens is um, we try to train both the staff um, and uh, you know, EMS to deal with any active shooter. Obviously, um, with what happened in Las Vegas, um, and so you basically learn how to save as many lives as possible um, in the quickest amount of time. Um, and uh, like I said, there were a lot of lessons learned from the Las Vegas mass casualties. Dr. Brooks, can you take us through how many patients uh, were seen at this facility and the other facility, and how many are still here? What condition are they in? Okay. Um, just because we're rolling. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, there were nine patients, uh, nine trauma alerts that had come here. Um, there were uh, several fat fatalities. One was treated and released. Um, right now, uh, in the ICU, uh, excuse me, um, ad admitted to the hospital right now, there are three patients. Uh, one is in critical and two are unfair. Um, at Broward General, um, and that inf the information may change, but I believe they saw seven. There were uh, four level two traumas and one level one. So, uh, what, is it? What, is, what, what does that mean? What's a level two trauma? Okay. What's a level um, one? A level one trauma are patients that meet the full criteria. It's called a trauma alert. Um, and then a level two um, are patients that do not um, meet the full criteria but are still at risk and uh, are best served to be seen at a trauma center because they may change in terms of their status, they may be deteriorated, so they need to be deteriorated. So a concrete number on how many patients you guys took in, and so far how many you guys released, and then you can say how many you have, are actually still caring for at this point in time. Um, what we got, well, we got the, well, we got the nine. Uh, well, I'm not totally sure about the uh, exact number at this point in time, but the information I gave you is kind of what I have to, to, to current, and you may be able to get uh, a little bit more precise information from either the trauma director or the ED director. What types of injuries, when these injuries came in, what type of injuries were you seeing? Okay, um, we had expected with an active shooter to have uh, gunshot wounds, um, and unfortunately most have been high-powered high rifles, um, penetrating wounds to the body, the torso, the chest, extremities, and that's what we were expecting, and uh, that's, the, that's the majority of the patients that we have. So majority of the patients? The patients. So majority of the patients had injuries to their torso and when penetrating and uh, torso and some extremity. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through what it's like here when these patients are coming in? Um, the, the doctors are setting up. I mean, what's that? Sure. What is okay. That like? um, the code green is called. We gear up the system to get ready for the patients that are coming in. Um, EMS will usually tell us the number of trauma alerts you have and in general the type of injuries that they may have so that we can be prepared. And as they come, we have multiple trauma bays uh, to take the patients and uh, you know multiple physicians that are taking these patients as they come in. Um, as fate would have it, they didn't all arrive at one time. Um, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately they had to um, search the school and it took time and that 
time of searching the school allowed more of a metered kind of a response. So we were getting boluses of patients and, uh, you know, different from getting all of them at one time. So it was better, better for a patient. What was the time between when you called the code green and you got the first patient and how long until you got everyone? Uh, gosh, uh, I think initial time the code green was called. Um, and we probably, and I'm, I'm just guesstimating, we probably got the first patient within probably 30, 35 minutes in general, but we had already geared up and we were waiting and uh, waiting for those patients. So 30 minutes from the time of green? Um, actually, when the code green is called, if the patients are at the door, we're ready to take care of them then, but we had our whole team assembled and, and, and ready. So um, when they started to bring the patients, they brought the more severe uh, patients first and we were able to care for them. Did you go, um, did you have any of the patients from the shooting at the airport last year and in this year? Yes, and, and actually, how did this right. to actually I'm glad you kind of brought that up. Um, uh, we try to stay ahead of the curve and the Fort Lauderdale um, mass casualty incident uh, was a learning experience and we felt really good about the response um, and um, we ramped up with exercises and cold green drills. Um, we use that information to try to make the response uh, for any further mass casualties better. So uh, it, it definitely helped. So each one, and even the Las Vegas, there was a tremendous amount learned. So unfortunately, um, we can't um, predict when the next mass casualty will occur, but we're always trying to stay ahead of the curve and plan for what could happen. Um, I'm sorry, can you give me an example of something that was learned either from the incident last year or from Las Vegas? Um, well, the Vegas incident, I think, um, learned the most personally. Um, what wound up happening, um, you had multiple, multiple casualties. Mm -hmm. And uh, the um, trauma center there in Las Vegas had already thought about it, and they already had a plan. Mm -hmm. So when it, something like that did occur, they were ready, and what they did was they retrofitted um, what was occurring to keep the flow of the patients through the system. Um, they had many more casualties um, and injuries, um, and they did, uh, you know, it, it was a learning tool that I used to um, teach the uh, trauma center medical directors um, in, the, in the system to have a plan, um, have it ready, um, and make changes um, when things occur. You said that run through that active shooter um, drill was in September? Uh, just in the last couple of months, yeah, a couple of months ago. And so I assume you weren't at the Las Vegas shooting, so you just reached out to the doctors there? And well, what happened, um, as fate would have it, um, a lot of the good information was disseminated in uh, one of our journals, one of our monthly okay. journals, so that, uh, which is good because you learn what's out there and you could use it at your facility. So it's a lot of sharing of information, which is great, because we want to go forward as a system in the, in the whole country. Did you guys had the shooter here too yesterday? Uh, was treat, that just treated, treated and released? Treated and released, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we're gonna- Appreciate it. Five minutes.